Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and I'm back in my version 1.0 world to feature Red Power 2 pre-release 4. That's right, it's up for version 1.0 of Minecraft and you can see a bunch of the cool things I've already started making with it. And I'm going to go through and show you guys how all this stuff works in just a moment here. Don't worry about it. There's a lot of new things added. And uh, while I'm at it, why don't I just read for you guys real quick from Elleram's blog to let you see what's new. Um, she introduced the Bluetricity Energy Net, which is basically going to be all the coding behind the scenes for routing Bluetricity. She's added battery boxes, a voltmeter, a sorting machine, a retrieving machine, a buffer, some paint cans and paintbrushes, redstone tubes, and uh, I think that's about it. There's some bugs that she fixed and a couple other cool things to check out. So why don't I get started on this Red Power 2 pre-release 4 mod spotlight. Alright guys, so I'm scrolling through my crafting guide here. You can see there's some paint buckets and paint brushes. We'll check those eyes out in a bit. Uh, here's the deployer, the block breaker, the transposer, the filter, and the item detector. I covered all those in my Red Power 2 video on machines. Now here's some of the new stuff. We've got a sorting machine, which I'll show you guys how to use. A retriever. Here's our old pneumatic tubes, and there's now a redstone tube. Um, there's the buffer. Blue Trick Furnace you've seen before as well as the solar panel, but now it looks like there's been added some batteries and a battery box. Pretty neat. And a voltmeter. Pretty cool indeed. Uh, looks like it uses copper. And that's about it. So let's get started showing off some of these cool items that she's added for us. So you guys remember the Alloy Furnace, which I've shown you in some previous tutorials. And you want to put some uh, fuel in this guy. I'm going to go with coal right now. There we go. And the first thing I'm going to do is take um, some more coal. I'm going to place eight pieces in there. Almost eight. And I'm going to grab some sand. There we go. Eight pieces of that. And you'll see as soon as the eighth piece goes in, it starts cooking. And this is going to craft the silicon bool, which I have also shown you guys in the past. While that's cooking up, I'm going to go ahead and find myself a saw. Hey, there's one. That should work just fine. So let's grab that silicon bool and go place the saw in the crafting table with the sapphire handsaw. But, silly me forgot, I think you actually need the diamond handsaw for this one. There you go. And you get 16 silicon wafers. Excellent. Now I'm going to go ahead and place my silicon wafer, just one of those, with one, two, three, four pieces of redstone, and it's going to start cooking up for me a red doped wafer. Now you should also remember Nicolite, which is uh, what we use to create Bluetricity items, and that goes in there with a silicon wafer to get a blue doped wafer. So that's red doped, and here comes blue doped. So that's pretty cool. And these are the components, uh, some of the components for some of the new machines. Now remember the silver ingots? You get those from silver, place them in a crafting table with some Nicolite, and you'll get one of those blue alloy ingots, which is like a red alloy ingot, but it's for blutricity. There we go. So the first thing I'm going to make here is what's called a BT battery, or blutricity battery. And you can see it's copper on the top, tin, and then another piece of copper, and then some nicolite on the sides. And I'm going to make myself four of those guys right now. And what am I going to do with this, you ask? Well, Let's also grab ourselves a blue alloy ingot, which you saw me craft a minute ago, and some iron. There we go. And if we set up a crafting table like so, and a piece of wood on top, just for looks of course, we get a battery box. And this guy is basically your energy storage unit for electricity power. And if we right click on it, we'll see there's this bar here and then this big old bar here. Let's figure out how these work, shall we? I'm going to go ahead and give myself some more of those um, uh, blue alloy ingots because basically I want to have some wiring and that's what I need to make wiring. And I'm going to need some cotton. Uh, yeah, here we go. Well, sorry. And remember, this recipe here for your blue alloy wiring is only temporary using wool. Um, it's going to use rubber once the rubber trees and all that are built in. So I'm going to run my wiring here, and I'm going to connect the wiring up to a solar panel, which I also showed you in one of my prior videos. Here's some solar panels for me, 
excellent. And if I place a solar panel on the ground, it's going to start charging this little bar right here, provided it's daytime, which it is. And one solar panel is slowly going to build some energy up. So let's throw a few more of these guys down, shall we? That looks better. And you can see this battery thing starting to fill up more and more. And what's going to happen is this is the internal charge of the battery box. And this is your surplus energy bar right here. And this isn't going to really start filling up until this guy gets near the top. And when he does get near the top, especially into the green zone, this little arrow here is going to light up indicating that energy is bleeding off of the main internal storage into the surplus area. So let's see what happens. All right, we've gotten up to this point, and now any extra energy generated here is going to bleed off into the battery box's surplus. So let's hook up a few more solar panels just to speed this process up. So I've gone ahead and increased this little guy here, and you can see it's quickly filling up this surplus energy. And that's basically how it works. Now what's going to happen is if we start draining energy out of here, it's going to drain from this side and then this arrow is going to light up, indicating that the surplus energy is refilling this bar here. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So I've removed all the box um, cabling here. And you can see, what's also neat is that the interface on the side of this guy is kind of showing us how full it is. So you can see it's, you know, about a fifth of the way full, a fifth of the way full up here. And if we go ahead and give ourselves another one of these battery boxes, like here, and just run some more cabling between the two, it's going to start filling up this guy rather quickly at the expense of this guy. And you can see this thing start to drain and the arrows pointing over here to the left, indicating that it's draining out this surplus energy and back into this little spot here. And it's basically going to try and balance these two battery boxes. What I've noticed about the Red Power 2 Energy Net is that it tries to keep everything balanced as best as it can. Now, I might be totally wrong on that, but that's just my observation at the moment, is when you have a bunch of battery storages, it automatically tries to balance them. So you can see right now it's kind of stabilized, and it's got a little bit of energy here and a little bit of surplus energy here. So, like I said, kind of stabilized. Again, I'm not 100% sure if that's the way it's coded, but that's the way it seems to work. So that covers the batteries and the battery boxes. Uh, keep in note that I don't believe at the current implementation um, that the batteries do anything. These guys here, BT batteries, but I'm sure they'll do something in the future. So for now, they're just used as a crafting component in the battery boxes. But like I said, it may do something more in the future. Next up, I'm going to show you the voltmeter. It's uh, three copper along the bottom, some nickelite, and some wood along the top here. And that gives you a voltmeter. And if you go right click on a cable, it'll tell you uh, the volts and the amps flowing through that cable. And I'm going to be totally honest with you guys, I have no idea what that means. Um, but I guess it's a measurement of how much energy is flowing through it? I, I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure LRAM is going for like a very accurate way for energy to work in these mods. Um, so if you're an electrician, you might know volts and amps and all that stuff. And I'm pretty sure that's what she's going for here. So just keep in mind that's how the voltmeter works. Um, I don't know too much about it, but hopefully at some point I'll figure it out. All right, cool. Looks like these guys are doing stuff. Yeah, no idea. I'm sure this means something to someone who knows about electricity. But anyway, moving on. Next up, I'm going to show you guys the retriever. And for that, you're going to need some brass, some iron, a piece of leather, some ender pearls. Yeah, we're getting pretty complicated here with this recipe, aren't we, huh? Yep, and we're also going to need a filler, uh, filter, I'm sorry. And if you saw my spotlight on this previously, you saw how to build a filter. Otherwise, you can look on the blog for a link to a recipe list. And that gives you a retriever. Let's hook this guy up to a system and figure out how he works. So I'm just going to place the retriever on the ground facing me. Um, so you can see it has an output slot on the back and input on this side here. So this yellow side is your input. Next, I'm going to just grab a chest real quick, and I'm going to place some items in that chest. Let's place, I don't know, some diamonds, we'll place some copper, some wood, some dirt, what the heck. And I'm going to hook up some tubing, which you guys have seen me make in the past. And in case you forget, tubing is brass ingots around glass. 
And on the output here, I could just leave it empty, but I'm just going to go ahead and place another chest right over on this side here. Now what the retriever does is, first off you'll see it has an interface and it needs some power. So we definitely need to hook up some power to this retriever. So let's go ahead and do that now by just placing some solar panels next to it. And I could just as easily hook up um, a battery box as you can see in the distance there. But I'm just going to go ahead and hook up the solar panels. And you'll see that they slowly start to charge the internal battery. Um, now from what I gather about these two things is this bar here is the internal battery in terms of how much energy is stored inside the device. And this bar here is the efficiency in terms of is it getting enough power to run continuously or is it going to run slower as a result of not getting enough power. And I'm guessing that has something to do with amperage and voltage, but like I said, I'm not an electrician. But as you can see, once we pass the halfway mark, it's definitely getting more than enough power to keep this machine running. And the internal storage is pretty much full, so that's good. I'm now going to go ahead and place a diamond in the retriever. Anywhere in here will do. Um, just keep in mind that where you place it depends on, you know, the order that it grabs stuff at. And as you can see, there's some diamonds in the chest here. I'm going to go ahead and create a button or a lever. Let's do a lever. Eh, a button actually. I'm just going to place it right next to it here and push the button. And the retriever will retrieve from this tubing it'll find a diamond in one of the chests and retrieve it. And it wound up placing it in here because the output pipe went this way. So let's see that again. And it'll keep pulling diamonds as often as I click. At least, of course, until there are no more diamonds in the chest and it has no more to pull out. And all the other junk will remain in there. And if I add some wood to this guy, it'll add wood to the list of items that can be pulled out. Pretty spiffy. And if you have some other chests going on here, you can definitely uh, go ahead and pull from multiple chests, which is pretty awesome if I do say so myself. So we can place some wood in here, some copper in there, and some nickelite here. And we can tell this guy that wood, copper, and nickelite can all be pulled from chests and just clicking on it, it's just going to go ahead and find the copper in whatever chest it's in. So you can see it's getting pulled out of here. And it's doing the copper first because of the way that we set up this grid. I don't know exactly how they're laid out, but I think it's something like down and then down. I'm not positive. And now it's grabbing wood from the chests. Two more pieces to grab. And then it'll be grabbing nickelite. And you could just as easily set up a timer here to automatically pull. And I'll show you a system like that in a minute. Alright guys, now the color of this here is going to determine um, which tube the things go to. And this will become more clear once you see how the sorter works. But basically keep in mind about this little colored thing here when we get to the sorter, which is coming up right now. Now to explain sorters, I'm going to have to explain paint and a couple other items here. So first off, I'm going to open up my alloy furnace here, and I'm going to give myself some iron, which I'll find here in a moment. There we go. And I'm going to find some tin. There we are. Two pieces of iron and one piece of tin will come together to make a tin plate. And I want two sets of tin plates for now, so why don't I go ahead and craft two of them. And that'll give me four tin plates per crafting cycle. And here comes the next set. We'll make a total of eight. Marvelous. Now, I take my tin plates, and those will make a tin can for me. Let's check that out. There you go. Tin plates like that equals a paint can. Pretty straightforward. Now, anybody who's watching me play notices that I'm picking up flax seeds along with normal seeds as I'm breaking grass. So you get those flax seeds, and you combine it with one of your dyes. So let's grab, I don't know, a yellow dye here. I'm going to place the yellow dye with a paint can and two flax seeds, and that'll give me yellow paint. Lapis lazuli, which is blue dye, gets me blue paint. You're getting the picture here, right? We can get green paint. Lime paint, that is. Cool. So let's go with the green paint just for now. Next up, we're going to need a paint brush, and that's pretty simple and straightforward. 
is just a stick and a piece of wool. And it goes a little something like this. Stick, wool, and any color wool will do. And you combine your paintbrush with a paint can and you get a lime paintbrush. And you'll see it used a little bit of paint out of the paint can. And I can go ahead and give myself a couple more paint cans just to advance this. But if I wanted purple paint, I would need another paintbrush. And the purple paint. And you get the point. So just to keep things simple, I'm going with blue, red, yellow, and green paint. So now let's craft ourselves a sorter. And the sorters are pretty, pretty awesome. So we've got our filter here again, a couple red doped wafers, some blue alloy ingots, that's right, this machine requires blue trick power, and some iron ingots. And let's go ahead and take our sorting machine, and we're going to head over here, and I'm going to place it on the ground right about there. That looks good. And now, where's my blue alloy wire? Let's go ahead and hook up our blue alloy wire here to our battery. And we'll see that this guy will quickly start filling up with power. And that's just to demonstrate the battery. And you're going to look at this interface and say, whoa, what's going on here? This thing is complicated looking. Don't worry, it's pretty easy. Direwolf will take care of you. So first off, you need to know the sorting machine has an input side. That's the side I'm looking at right now. And it has an output side, which is this guy right here. You can either pump using tubes, items in here. So either take your pneumatic tubes and run your tubing into the front of it. Or you can simply have, and I went ahead and knocked off this blue alloy wire here. Or you can simply have a chest sitting in front of it. And there's another item that can go in front of it that I'll show you in a minute, but for now we'll just deal with the chest. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up the chest, it's empty now. And I'm gonna run some tubing behind it. Now what the sorter is going to do is it'll allow you to sort things by combining paint, pneumatic tubes, and the sorting machine. Keep in mind it needs some power. And it's got this little button here to change modes, and it took me a long time to figure out what this was, and I actually had to go talk to Elram herself and say, hey, help, I don't get it. She hooked me up though, and I got how this works, and I'll explain it to you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and place down some tubes here connect them and connect them like so and I'm gonna paint the pneumatic tubes one color per chest so I'll make this guy green this guy yellow this guy blue and this guy red pretty cool now if we go open up this interface we'll see if as we click on these little things down here we can set colors so there's green and here's yellow and here's red, if I can find it. Oh, there's blue. How about blue? And if you right-click, you go backwards in the coloring. So there's red. And this button I'll explain in a minute. But if we get over to here, we have this last option here. So there's actually five options. And these are the different ways the sorting machine reacts to the inventory in front of it. But this last option here lets you determine what color things go to if they don't have a destination. So I'm going to go ahead and create um, a white tube. But just to show you guys how that works. So I need a white paintbrush and a couple more tubes and another chest. Paint it white and place the chest there. All right, let's put some items in here and figure this out, shall we? Okay, so we've got slime balls, glowstone, lapis, and redstone. And I just tried to match the color of the item with the color of the colors down here, just for simplicity's sake. But you can put anything in here. We can put cobblestone in the red. It doesn't matter. All this is going to do is let us sort these items into the appropriate chests. And to sort the items out of here, we just need to place them in this chest here. So let's go with cobblestone, for example. And for now, just because uh, I'm going to leave this white mode on here. And the way that we get this sorting machine to pump an item out of here, what do you think, guys? It's pretty obvious if you think about it. You're going to need to apply a redstone signal. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a button for now. And press the button. And it pumps a cobblestone out of the chest. And you see the cobblestone has that little red outline. That's telling you the cobblestone is in the red line here, and it's destined for a tube with a red output. 
Now, you're probably thinking that the red paint here forces the item to go into the red tube. That's not entirely true. All it means is that this red tube allows red items to come in. But if we have a tube going off, let's say, in this direction with another chest, the item could go into an unmarked tube. So it's not that the item is forced into a red tube, it's that the item is allowed into a red tube. So keep that in mind as you're building your designs. Now this is red power after all, so I got a little timer here. I'm going to set it to a one second delay, and now it's going to tick every second and pull items out of the chest. So if I put just a couple more cobblestone in there and let it run, it's going to go ahead and pull all the cobble out. And let's break this line because that was just for demonstration purposes. And if we put some lapis in there, where do you think it's going to go? Well, of course, it's going to get a blue color and it's going to go to the blue tube. Awesome. Now let's real quick cover what this little button here does. Um, there's four modes here. Okay, so let's place a bunch of items in here. I'm going to place redstone, glowstone, slime balls, and lapis. And as we know, that all goes in here. Um, now, the first mode here is called Any Stack Sequential. And you'll notice that in this mode, there's like this highlighted column here, right? So without this mode, like this one here, this one here, and this one here, there are no highlighted columns. So this is any stack sequential, and it'll sequentially go through the stack and pull out one item in a row from each of these stacks. Let's turn on our lever and see what happens. Just flick the switch, and you'll see it pulled out slime, and then glowstone, and then lapis, and then redstone, and slime, and glowstone, and lapis, and redstone. So it's sequentially going across the stack. Next up, we've got the all stack sequential. And what that's going to do is it's going to sequentially go across and grab everything that's listed in the stack. So you notice it got stuck here. Why did it get stuck? Because there's cobblestone listed and there is no cobblestone in the chest. And if I put a couple pieces in here, it's going to continue along sequentially. And it'll grab any item out of this long list in the column here but because it's all stack sequential, it needs to grab all the items out of the stack in a row. Switching back to any stack sequential, it'll grab any item out of each stack and proceed to the next stack. So even though there is no cobble and we're back on the first mode, any stack sequential, it doesn't mind. Now if we put diamond in this stack, for example, it's gonna get stuck here because, once I put it back on all stack, because there is no diamond. So that's the all stack sequential. It'll sequentially go through and try to grab everything that's available in the stack. Now the third mode is this vertical bars thing, and this is the random all stack. And you can see it's grabbing all these green items. And once it's done with the green items, it's gonna grab all the yellow items. So it's going to randomly pick a stack in the chest and grab everything in that stack. And sort all the items in that stack. So instead of sequentially going across the line, it just picks something in here and grabs all of them. And the final mode we have here is this one, which looks like multicolored things. And this just does anything. It'll pull any item out of here in any order. I think it does it in the order that it actually is in. So, um, pretty much anything that you want to come out. But keep in mind that when you're in this mode, it won't pull items out of the chest that don't belong in the system. So, there is no diamond in here anywhere, and the diamond is staying in the chest. But if I put it on that last mode where we have an option like white, now the diamonds are getting pumped out and they're going over to the white line. And it pumped out all 64 of them. So I know that's a little bit confusing, but the basic gist is that this goes in a sequential pattern and will proceed to the next line or the next column here as long as it gets one of the items in the column. 
So again, if you had like, you know, a handful of different things in here, it would work just fine as long as any one of these were satisfied, it would move to the next column. In this mode, it has to satisfy every item in the column before it can move to the next column. In this mode, it'll just go through and pull everything out in order. And in this mode, it'll pull any items out. And in this mode, it'll pull even things in here that aren't part of the list and put anything that doesn't belong in the list in the white slot. Next up, I want to show you guys the buffer. This is a really neat little machine, and I'm going to go ahead and demo it for you right now. Um, I don't believe it needs power, so let's go ahead and just put it up on the ground here. I want it off the ground um, simply because the way the buffer works is if you open up the interface, you'll notice that the buffer has one, two, three, four, five sides to it or five columns to it. And it's also got five sides that are not output sides. And the way the buffer works is that it will fill up each column depending on which side the item gets pumped into. So if you pump an item on this side, it'll fill up one of these columns. And if you pump an item into this side, it'll fill up a different column. Let's check it out. Now you guys remember how the transposer works, I hope. It'll pull an item out of a chest and pump it into a tube for you. So I've got two transposers hooked up to two chests on two sides of our buffer. So let's place some cobble here, some brass, let's actually just do two of each, and some glass, and over here we'll put diamonds, brass, and glowstone. And keep in mind now that I have brass in both chests. Okay, let's see what happens. I'm just going to use a lever here for simplicity's sake, and one pump will send cobblestone straight in there, and you'll notice it landed in the middle because of the side that it went in and another flip will send it right into the middle again. And the next item, the brass, goes in the middle. And the next item, the brass, goes in the middle. You're getting the point now, right? Let's try this side, see what happens. Here's brass. Oh, it landed here. It did not add to this stack, as you might have expected it to. But keep in mind, it's going into a different side, so it's landing in a different column. And there you go. And if you wired, set up your tubes so that they went like so, and let's put a couple more diamonds in here. Now it's going into this column. So that's how the buffer works. And keep in mind, this slot here is the output of the buffer. And you can easily hook that up to another transposer, a filter, or a sorting machine. And buffers and sorting machines are pretty much designed to work together. So keep that in mind. And I think this pretty much wraps up the PR4 updates in Red Power 2. So you guys have seen the solar panels, which you saw before, charging up some battery boxes. And here's the neat little interface that battery boxes have when they're fully charged. Pretty darn spiffy. And you've seen the sorting machine and how complex and complicated it can be, but it's also pretty simple if you only want it to just sort your items. But you can specify exactly how it sorts your items and how it pulls from chests, which is pretty darn neat. And the buffer is an awesome item. I mean, just the potential here is hard to describe, but it's definitely going to be a neat item and I can't wait to start playing with it in my new Let's Play series. And the retriever here, you saw how that works, and it's really pretty cool. And just, you know, Click the lever and it'll pull the item out of the chest that it needs. Ta da! Now, remember, I said that it has that white little color here. You can use it to sort items into chests, but remember, it will only sort items into the color if all the other chests on the line also have a color on them. And you don't have to connect the colors directly to chests, you can also use it to define which line things go down. So play with the coloring of your um, tubes here, and you should get a pretty good idea of how the coloring works. So this is Direwolf20 signing off on the Red Power 2 pre-release 4. Uh, this is available for Minecraft version 1.0. It's definitely shaping up to be an impressive mod, 
And, uh, uh, I'll be honest with you guys, I think this is, like, the number one mod on my list of mods that I'm most looking forward to. Every time a new update comes out, I can't wait to go and download it. So, if you're not already using Red Power, definitely get it. I have a whole tutorial video series showing how to use all the other stuff that's already been in the mod. So, again, Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.